Hi. Now in the next part of this question, we're told that the pulling force of T newtons acting on P is suddenly removed and P comes to instantaneous rest 0.4 seconds later. And what we've got to do now is calculate U. So if you'd like to have a go at this and you haven't done so already, just give you a moment to pause the video and as usual, come back when ready and I'll run through the work solution. Okay, welcome back if you had a go. Now, if the force of T newtons is removed, let's just remove that now, then the only forces acting on P are going to be its weight, which we'll have acting downwards then, which would be 0.25, its mass, times G, and that would be measured in newtons. There'll be the contact force from the plane. Now, this contact force, which we'll call R, is going to be different from the previous normal reaction that we had from the plane. That's because T has been removed and that helped to reduce actually the uh, value of R. So they're the only two forces acting on our particle P now. And we're told that it goes up the plane for 0.4 seconds and then comes to instantaneous rest. So what I'll do is I'll just put an arrow in there just showing that it came to rest 0 meters per second. And the time it took was when t equaled 0.4 seconds. Okay. So there's going to be an acceleration as it changes speed from u to zero. That acceleration I'll call a, and it'll be meters per second per second. And I can expect a to be a negative value because it's decelerating. So in order to calculate u, it looks like I'm going to need to use an equation for constant acceleration, one of the SUVAT-based equations. But this is going to be a problem, and that is I don't know the acceleration a. So I can get that by resolving forces up the plane in the direction of acceleration. So that's where we start with this part of the question, by resolving up the plane, taking up the plane as positive. Always resolve in the direction of acceleration, okay? So what have we got? Well, none of R will be in this equation because it's perpendicular to the direction we're resolving in. What we've got to do is take our weight and split this into two components. Now if I just put a dotted line in here, okay, you should be familiar with this then, that the angle in here is 30 degrees. And what I need to do is split that weight into two components. Those two components which we've discussed in the past are these two here. And we're not interested in this component, which would be 0.25g cosine of 30, because it contains the angle. It's this one down the plane, which is going to be acting in the negative sense. So it's going to be minus 0.25g sine of 30 degrees. Okay. So let's just take those components away. So there's my force diagram, and I'm seeing the component of weight acting down the plane then as being minus 0.25g sine 30. And this is the only force then on the particle acting in this direction. So it's going to equal the mass times the acceleration. And the mass is 0.25 kilograms, and the acceleration A is what we're trying to find. So if we rearrange this for A, just by dividing by 0 0.25, well, in fact, both 0 0.25s cancel. I can see that from here. So let's just take them out, OK? So what we get, if we take G as 9.8, the acceleration turns out negative, as we would expect, because it's decelerating. And it turns out to be exactly minus 4.9, minus 4.9 meters per second per second. Right, so we're in a position now then to work with our SUVAT-based equation. Let's just put S for displacement, U, 
initial velocity, v, final velocity, a acceleration, t for time. And I need to set up a positive sense, so I'm going to set up positive as being up the plane. So as for s the displacement, going from here to here, I don't really know what that is, so we'll just leave that out. u, well u is the thing we're trying to find. v, the final velocity, well that's equal to zero. Okay, the acceleration, a, we've just worked out, is negative 4.9. And t, we've got, which is 0.4. So what equation involves u, which we're trying to find, v, a, and t? Well, the equation is going to be v equals u plus a, t. So if we substitute in here our values, we've therefore got v, which is 0, equals u, which we're trying to find. And then we're adding the acceleration, which is minus 4.9, multiplied by the time of 0.4 seconds. And if you work this out, OK, well, I think we'll just add, in fact, this term to both sides. We end up with u equaling... 4.9 multiplied by 0.4, and that works out at exactly 1.96. Okay, so u then is 1.96, and we've got it in meters per second. Okay, so I hope that's given you an idea how to do that. If you did have problems, if you got it right, that's great. Well done.